In comparison to how your parents raised you, what would you do differently if you were to have kids? Be interested in their interests. Talk to them about it. Encourage them. My youngest daughter enjoys making toy reveal YouTube videos and LPS videos and I have to talk in silly voices and make them dance and sing but it makes her unbelievably happy. We have over 300 videos so far. My middle daughter enjoys making Asian cartoon animations about love and dating. I have zero interest in it but seeing her enjoying it makes me happy so I watch every single one of them. And I rate them. And there is a lot. My stepdaughter is a teenager and her dad doesn't really bother with her so I make sure I'm there for her but also keeping some distance too. She enjoys trying out her new shading and shadows of her different bits of makeup on my face. She buys these weird sponges that look like teardrops and loves trying them out. It's relaxing and keeps her happy because we get to spend time doing something she enjoys. The teardrop sponges are beauty blenders and they are awesome. I wouldn't dump all my problems out on the table for them. It's important to be transparent with your kids, but there are some things parents might be better off keeping to themselves. I remember being like 6 or 7 and my mom sitting down at the table crying to me about how nobody would ever love her again after she divorced. It was a rough time for all of us. I have kids, and it's something that I try very hard to do. Make it to where my kids can talk to me. I never felt as though I could talk to my mom. If there was something going on in my life, I couldn't go to her because if it was something she didn't like or want to hear, I'd better buckle my seatbelt for a judgement ride. Something like mom, I like this boy and he said he wants to kiss me would have resulted in my being grounded to prevent the kiss from happening. So yeah, I'm not telling you crap. My biggest thing with my daughter is, I will never make her feel guilt about my spending money on her. I used to basically get told off any time a school excursion came up. Or I needed new uniform. Like it was my fault that my parents now had to pay to raise me. I remember feeling such anxiety whenever I gave my mum a note from school about a new book or something that had to be paid for. It got so bad that when I was older, but not yet earning my own money, I wouldn't even ask for money to go to the movies or spend time with friends. Because I knew I would get the lecture about how hard it is to raise kids and how I'm sending them broke. I've since come to realize that there was never a shortage of money to buy cigarettes or alcohol though. Now as a single parent, money is tight, but I will never let me daughter think that she is a financial burden. I wouldn't take off on a random Thursday while my kids are at school to go to Colorado for 4 days to meet with my me head ex-boyfriend from high school when my oldest child is only 16. Basically I'd do everything differently lol. I won't fight in front of my kids or let them know details about mine and my husband's relationship that are inappropriate. My kids do not need to know the last time I got laid or the BJ I gave my husband last week and that he never returns the favor. Real quotes. Kids are meant to be kids and are not another member of your relationship. They are not supposed to be hearing all about your fights and the terrible things you are thinking about your spouse. That you're thinking of leaving him her. You guys are miserable. She never does the dishes. He never does the laundry etc. It really fricks the kids up and makes it impossible to trust either parent. Give them some privacy. Locks weren't allowed in our house and I still have my mom barging on me. On purpose. Without knocking to this day. I'm 20. Growing up. If there was something I was writing or drawing that I didn't want to show her. She'd rip it out of my hands to look. I don't get how a lot of parents will breathe down their child's neck then be surprised when the kid pulls away from them and doesn't want to tell them anything. Christ, I couldn't agree more on this. My parents were like this and it was particularly hard due to living with internet and having parents who didn't want you talking to online strangers. Don't make them cry daily. And if they do cry, don't tease them for it. Pick my battles. I'm not going to make my kid brush her teeth with hand soap for saying a bad word if it pops out while singing to a song, or telling me we don't say these words, if she says it in a disrespectful context, absolutely she is getting in trouble, I want her to be able to speak to me openly and without fear, and I'm not naive enough to think she won't ever say these things at some point, anyway, that's just one that was topical for me and my 4 year old today when I didn't pay the best attention to the playlist in the car. It's funny how much profanity is in the music I listen to, but I did not notice that until I started helping my sister get my nephews and niece to their commitments, then I realized that it is quite frequent. 
probably not hit mine as much or use phrases like it's okay for your kids to be a little afraid of you. My dad is my hero for so many reasons but dang bruh, she looks. I was, and still am afraid of my stepfather, no matter how hard he tries, no matter how much he's changed. I will never be able to have a proper relationship with him because of what he did to me when I was younger. My children will be allowed privacy. I won't search through every inch of my child's rooms on a daily basis. If I have a daughter, I won't ever shame her for menstruating. I won't ever try to teach my teenage daughter a lesson by threatening to not get her pads. I won't ever force my kids to eat until they're sick. Nor will I withhold food as punishment. I won't ever tell my kids that no one will ever love them. I won't ever use the silent treatment as a punishment. I won't ever punish my kids for crap I make up. I won't ever make my kids feel worthless. If my kid works on a play or something for months, I'll be in the front row and not leave early. I won't try to keep my child under my roof by telling them lies about people trying to kill them. Basically, I won't be my father or his wife. Not expecting perfection out of children. Kids gotta make mistakes. This hits close to home. I got 85% last year in a technically practice exam. And my parents were like I'm a disappointment to them. Take more pictures. To add on to this, videos too. My parents didn't take any videos of me when I was little. All I have are pictures, which are great. But it would be nice to see how little me looked and sounded and I'll never know. Consistent rules. Rules created with their reality in mind. My dad was constantly trying to restrict Wi-Fi access on school nights, when most of my homework was online. At one point he tried to make the one hour of screen time rule apply to homework. It was awful. My kids will have parents who cooperate and stay on the same page. My kids will not be raised in a house where it's better to risk getting caught lying, than to tell the truth. My kids will have parents who want them to be happy because they led lives that made them, my kids, happy. Not because they lived the way I thought they should and were happy doing that because if they weren't happy there was something wrong with them. My kids will be taken to a psychiatrist, evaluated, and given therapy if their behavior is concerning. I will never pit my kids against each other. If my kids abuse each other, I will not tell the victim it's their fault or that they just have to be more understanding or that they're actually the one being mean to the abusive kid. I will stop the abusive kid, shield the victim, and get them both help. God dang sounds like my father. I'm going to try my hardest to raise him on healthy wholesome foods and not give unnecessary sugars. My mom didn't feed me healthy food at all. I could eat whatever I wanted and it caught up to me. Now I'm paying for it and trying to lose weight. Partially caused by meds though. Definitely think health skills and knowledge are super important. I can agree on this. My dad and my grandma both fed me either too much food period or too much sugar. I'm now obese because of the habits they set. Trying to stop it. Not constantly compare them to other kids in a hopeless attempt to motivate them that ultimately causes permanent damage to their self esteem. I flipped my crap once because my grandma did that to my dad. He is in his early 60s. A few years back. She was angry with me for quite some time. I would probably make them try more. Let them fail more. I wouldn't do everything for them. I wouldn't cook every single meal. I wouldn't do their laundry all the time. I would make them do their own crap. Instead of giving them an allowance, I would pay them for doing stuff like chores. If they mess up, they mess up. The greatest teacher, failure is, more independence, more responsibility. I'm sure it's a mixture of many things but I'm sure that my parents overprotective sheltering has ruined my life and irreparably stunted my personal growth. Once they turn 4, that's where we live. We're not moving anywhere else unless it becomes a financially disastrous move to stay. They'll grow up in one house and stay with the same group of friends for their entire education. I spent the first 7 years of my life in one house. It was lovely. A good enough house. A nice neighborhood. Friends. My dad was a military brat and used to moving. We upgraded at 7. And then at 10. And then at 13. And 16. And 18. Moving sucks. Changing schools sucks. Having to make new friends over and over again sucks. My boyfriend's all about the upgrades. I just want stability. I wouldn't use the because I'm your parent reason for something. Explain your reasoning to the child. Chances are they are more likely to listen. 
push the children out of their comfort zone. Not enough to overload them but enough to get them used to change and doing things that they don't want to. Not constantly fight and yell and scream. Yeah, having both parents yell all the freaking time at each other but still remain together for some unknown reason. Thank god they're separated now. I just wish it happened sooner. I mean 11 years screaming at each other all day. Jesus. When I am a parent, there will be reasons for the rules I make. Kids don't have to like the reasons, but there will still be reasons. My parents had so many stupid weird rules for my sisters and I that they never explained, and still can't explain to this day, and it always pee me off, and none of that you can't cut dye your hair pierce whatever because you live in my house like goddamn, it's hair, and I will do everything I can to not be a hypocrite. My parents were staunchly against piercings and yet my mom has four in each ear, and it's not like she got them when she was young. She got her fourth piercing when she was 35. I clearly remember going with her to the mall and seeing it done. And when I asked if I could get my ears pierced again, she refused to let me. I was like 12 at the time. Actually have an emotional support system for them instead of just never talking to them about any of the deep intricacies of mental health and life. Especially if my little friends have anxiety like me. Not be such a stubborn dong. I know you want to be right. But come on, with evidence in front of you stop denying crap that's correct. In your own words, let go. Make sure to praise their work ethic instead of natural ability. Too many kids, like me, grow up being lauded for being naturally smart or curious or whatever and coast through school at first and then they're fricked once they get to high school and don't know how to study or do homework. I know plenty of people who aren't very intelligent but work their butt off and are way better off than I am now. Less hitting for sure. There is never a reason to beat a kid, regardless of what happens. My dad has always been scared of anything bad happening to me. Like be careful or you'll fall or don't take your phone out in the street or whatever, which is normal, but he overdid it. As a result, I was always scared of people or situations. Later in life I realized nothing bad could happen as long as I took moderate care, but I should go for new experiences. Literally almost nothing. Maybe a bit more dialogue and time spent with my kids but other than that, my parents were our great. Mine too. I can't think of anything. We did do a lot of ridiculous home projects. Like spend a day picking rocks in a field so my mom could have all this rock landscaping. I hated it but it wasn't bad for me. We also had a lot of parties and it sucked getting ready for them. Cleaning the garage. House. Yard. Ugh. How awful of my parents to have fun summer parties that we had to prepare for. I probably would have exposed them to dark crap sooner on to prepare them for the real world. My parents didn't shelter me that hard but I still had a lot of crap to pick up on entering my teens. Don't do it early. Probably wait until 8. Definitely not gonna tell anything my kid tells me in private to the rest of the family. This has made it where I can't talk to my mom or dad about anything that goes on in my life. Then I get pressured and guilt tripped into why I don't talk to them like did before I finally realized this. Thanks mom for ruining my trust in people. My parents fought constantly and my dad threatened me and my siblings a lot. It was a lot of getting in your face and screaming. A few times as teenagers we got between him and my mom. We were scared he would hit her. My husband's parents were drunks who divorced when he was younger. His dad's always been kinda self-centered and his mom was neglectful and had abusive boyfriends. We have two kids, 10 and 11 now. We've been married for 11 years. We rarely fight, and if we do it's a disagreement not an all-out scream fest. We get along great and our home environment is peaceful. Our kid's idea of screaming is when I speak harshly and firm. I don't drink. And my husband drinks on occasion but there is always a sober parent. We're happy with how they're being raised. They won't have any reason to be afraid or uncomfortable being home and they are annoyed with how much attention we give them. I'd do a lot less shunning. It's common to respond to anger with silence but I hated it growing up. It made me feel like crap so if I ever had kids I wouldn't really pull that with them. To clarify, it wasn't a cool off for a few hours type of silence. It would stretch out for days and occasionally weeks, and it just makes everyone in the house feel awkward. I'd just be around more and engage with them on their level. Also, 
discuss what's going to happen in certain social situations beforehand instead of just bringing them along. Things like funerals and weddings can be confusing as a kid. Comma things like funerals and weddings can be confusing as a kid, not to mention boring as frick. Let them remove body hair as soon as they want. My sister and I, both female, grew up quite hairy, almost her suit. My mother would not let me shave my leg or underarm hair until second year high school. Needless to say I was extremely self-conscious of it, even though I am quite blonde. My 4 year old daughter is exactly the same and as soon as she comes to me with concerns about how she feels with a lot of hair, we will tackle it, arms included. My dark haired sister has finally tackled her very dark haired arms at late 30s by laser and the change is ridiculously good. I've plucked my arms completely, twice in a couple of year when I was 25 ish and now just do a quick shave once a month or so. Hair removal is not just a hygiene thing, for some of us it's a confidence thing. Two, it totally sucks that the society that I live in looks at hairy females disapprovingly, but sometimes minor conforming is going to get you further in life. I wouldn't get divorced, make them move houses three times a week with joint custody as an only child, constantly get drunk, and crap on the other parent to them for 10 years. Preach, I can't accept parents as people no longer loved each other. I hate that a parent would abuse their child's trust to crap on the other parent. I wouldn't shelter them as much or force my beliefs onto them. I wouldn't put such a focus on school. Don't get me wrong. I would value education, but if school isn't for them and they're just average, that's going to be fine with me. Not everyone is an intellectual. Not everyone has to go to college. There's nothing wrong with wanting to work with your hands or going to a trade school. As long as they have a drive and a passion and they can make an okay living off of it, I'll be proud of them. If they don't get straight A's I really wouldn't care that much. I wouldn't just brush off everything they seem to be suffering from. If my child comes home from school every day crying, I will have them go to another school. This was my middle school experience. Don't take them out of a school unless they want to leave. It may be heck. But I made some good friends in heck. They get to keep all their body parts, especially the fun ones. That is, no forcible genital cutting. I would make sure one parent had time to be involved rather than both parents working full time and having kids in daycare from 6 months all day long. I would tell them they are safe and not do all the extreme stranger danger stuff so that they are terrified to be in a movie theater even sitting next to a parent. I would not force them to do organized sports. But I'm already 35 and not going to have kids, so it's kind of moot. Not fight in front of them. I grew up constantly seeing hearing my parents get into screaming matches until they finally got a divorce when I was 18 and I remember how much I hated it. I would never call them names or yell at them, nor would I physically hurt them. I would tell my kids that their success comes from their hard work and not from them being intelligent. I was always told how smart I was and I went through high school without putting much effort in and relying on my smarts to carry me through. I wouldn't force religion on them, and I would talk openly about financial constraints and decision making. I'm fighting for them in court, so, there's that. Yell less. Keep promises. My mum was forever saying yes to something and then changing her mind. Once I really wanted to adopt pet rats, she said yes if I won. Wrote a big essay on them I'm talking about novel sized at age 14 too. Did all my research 3. Found suitable places to adopt them from and 3. Paid for everything. She said yes multiple times as I asked her. And I had asked her at least once every 2 weeks. I talked to her about where I was going to keep them, name and such and she was perfectly fine with it. Well it finally came time to buy cages and such and I showed her this cage I planned to buy. It was pretty big, and I remember looking through a lot of research to find the perfect one. Straight away she completely changed her tune and forever stands that she never said yes if I ever brought it up she shut me down. It was a lot of time and effort and excitement just smashed and down the drain. She knew I was very serious about adopting them. She has done this for multiple things and now I don't believe her promises at all. This is just one example. I wouldn't do that to my kids. Teach them how to love their natural hair. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video.
Bye for now.